So our gang welcome back to some dynamics. So we have this question here. So we have some marbles that are going that are five grams, and they're dropped from rest, and they go through this tube from A to B, and then they fall from B into C into some uh, basket. And our goal is to find basically the displacement of R, how far we need to place that basket away from B. And then we also want to find the speed at which the marbles hit C. So half of this is going to be a kinematics problem, but the first half is going to be a work energy kind of question. So how are we going to do this, right? Well, we're going to use this equation. The sum of the forces, or basically the sum of the energies at the beginning, at A basically, plus the sum of the changes of energy, are equal to the sum of the eight final energies. So where are we going to look at the energy from? Well, let's look at the energy from A to B. We want to find the velocity of B, because once we find the velocity of B, it's just a kinematics problem of solve by two. You know how to do that from previous chapters. So let's find the change in energy from A to B, basically, uh, using this equation. So we know energy gets converted from one form to another, so that's how it's going to convert from potential energy to kinetic energy. So we know that they start at rest, so initial energies, uh, let's just say it has none, right? So there's nothing here, there's no kinetic energy at the beginning, so we can ignore that. And then the change in energy from A to B. Well, that change in energy is going to come from the gravitational potential energy, so we're going to label that potential gravitational energy. It's going to pick up speed from falling a meter. And then the final energy is at the bottom, that's going to be kinetic energy. So now we have this equation, the uh, gravitational potential energy is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So let's expand this, so potential gra gravitational potential energy, so mass gravity height, and the gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, right, mass velocity squared. Now we're finding velocity, right, so velocity, we're going to multiply that 2 over, and you're going to get that velocity is equal to square root of 2 gravitational, gravity times height. So gravity is obviously 9.81, height is the change of height from A to B, it's going to be one meter. So you're going to be plugging in two times 9.81 to get velocity is equal to 4.43 meters a second. So we can label that over here in our graph, right? This is 4.43 meters a second, and this is velocity in the x direction. So now we just have a kinematics problem to solve, right? We're trying to find distance r. So let's start with writing our velocity vector. So if we want to write this as a vector, obviously it's going to be 4.43i plus 0j right now. There's no velocity in the x direction. Give just a second. So how are we going to start this? Well, let's start with finding the time it takes to hit the ground. Usually when you have these kinematics problems and you want to find how far it travels, you're going to want to find how long it takes to hit the ground. So we can do that by just finding the change of position in the y direction. So our equation for that is going to be y minus y, or y is equal to y initial plus velocity y time plus one half gravity times squared. So we're using this equation. So let's just plug in everything we know. So y final is zero. Y initial is two meters, right? Because we're two meters off the ground. So velocity initial y is zero. Time, we don't know that yet, but it's going to be multiplied by zero. And then this is going to be minus one half 9.81 t squared. So obviously you're going to subtract that 2 over and then add that or multiply it over. And you're basically going to get 4 over 9.81 square root of that is equal to t. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did that right. Probably. Um, so then you're going to get that t is equal to 0 0.639 seconds. So that's how long it takes the ball to hit the ground. So that's a pretty important quantity right there. So now we can just look in the x direction. So we know that x is equal to x initial, which is, we're going to take that to be zero, because r is just that distance. And in fact, we can just label this r as the distance traveled. So it's going to be velocity in the x direction, so 4.43, multiplied by the time it takes, 639. Right, and there's no acceleration in the x direction, so this is our final equation. And you're going to get that r is equal to 2.83 meters. So here we found our answer. Now we just need to find the, ball, uh, the speed of the marbles when they hit C. So we know that the velocity in the x direction when it falls is 4.43 meters a second. And there's no acceleration in the x direction, so its velocity final is also going to be that. So all we need to find is basically the velocity in the y direction, and then we can find the magnitude. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's use the equation. Velocity final is equal to velocity initial plus acceleration time, which in this case acceleration is going to be gravity. So we're looking in the y direction. So velocity initial in the y is zero, so velocity final in the y direction is just going to be 9.81. I guess we can label it negative, and then the time it takes to fall. We found that to be 0 0.369. So 
So velocity find the y is equal to negative 6.23. Maybe it was just a second. 6.26, excuse me. So then we want to find the magnitude of that velocity or speed and take the square root of x, which is 4.43 squared, plus negative 6.26 squared. And you get that that speed is equal to 7.67 meters a second. So yeah, this is basically just a glorified kinematics problem, but we had to do a little bit of that work energy here at the A to B. So yeah, that's how you solve this kind of problem. Not too tricky, right? Just make sure to use your equations and now I do those kinematics problems. And yeah, if you have any questions, check out my playlist. Uh, leave any questions in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.